I'm Shoyano. I'm a pediatric neurology resident at the University of Chicago. Uh, I was here at the meeting with Dr. Silver to talk about a group of kids with ATP1A3 mutations who have clinical situations very different from HC and other reported phenotypes of the mutation. So the ATP1A3 mutation has some classic associated disorders like alternating hemiplegia of childhood, the rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism, a Kapos syndrome. But in the past few years, people have been describing children and adults with other very different clinical issues that don't fit into any of those categories and would not have been picked up uh, if we had, weren't screening people with whole exome sequencing and other new testing strategies. Um, so we reported uh, two families uh, where people had ATP1A3 mutations that never had hemiplegia, never had dystonia or RDP-like symptoms, but they did have episodes when they had ear infections or fevers, um, three days of unresponsiveness and paralysis um, and limp all over, and then weakness for months um, and other persistent motor deficits. And so um, one of the kids had this twice in her life um, when she was a toddler, both with ear infections, both three days of sudden unresponsiveness and weakness all over, and then three months to learn to walk again. And then the same thing happened again when she was 17 months old. Um, and so this story, we thought this story was important partly because if a particular mutation in ATP1A3 leads to a particular type of clinical presentation and a particular phenotype, then maybe it says something about how that mutation causes disease. Um, something we could learn from, like effects of temperature and fevers on that particular mutation, uh, mutated protein. Um, but the other thing that we thought was important is that since these kids never had any hemiplegias and never had any AHC-like uh, or classic AHC or RDP symptoms, um, if they hadn't had genetic testing, they would easily be mistaken as having some other disorder. So the kid's mother had the same gene mutation and the same phenotype, and she was told she had meningitis as a child, and that's why she was paralyzed for a year. And clearly that wasn't true. Um, so we, we think that there are probably a whole lot of kids and adults who have ATP1A3 mutations and disease because of that, and no one knows because they assume there was some kind of infection or some kind of autoimmune disorder. Well, people keep describing more and more types of syndromes and symptoms associated with ATP1A3 mutations, and so I think the the experts at the meeting were um, proposing to expand um, the group of patients who should be tested for ATP1A3. And I think in, even in our department, um, it, we need to educate the neurologists and pediatricians even about um, ATP1A3 and what kind of symptoms to look for. And if there is something unexplained, then the children should have genetic testing that includes uh, tests that could pick up ATP1A3 mutations.